Welcome back, everybody. This is Ramon with Bold Like a Lever. As you can see, there's a new setup here. I'm living in a new place. Um, this is my new office. I have the entire Bill and Hillary Clinton Presidential Penitentiary Library right behind me. Um, you can see a lot of it. I'm, I might may do a little, uh, you know, uh, walk through tour of the library today. Uh, you know, sometime. Uh, just to give you guys an idea, but today, you know, to start things off, um, you know, with business, I'm going to discuss with you the Kasich Hickenlooper Obamacare bailout uh, plan. And um, if you want to hear a little more about it, you know, more of a back and forth, hopefully, um, this evening I'm planning to have uh, past 10, 10 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, live chat with Alex Ioannidis. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. A um, uh, gentleman who's uh, more on the moderate side of the GOP. Um, and, you know, this is obviously a plan that I would oppose. For, there's a couple reasons I oppose the plan. Um, and I'm going to bring up an article. It's not from Ohio. Uh, it's led by the governor of Ohio, John Kasich, but uh, I'm <laughs> I'm an Ohio resident. Um, there are millions of Ohio residents that have already had their premiums go up. Uh, Obamacare has been a disaster at all levels. And frankly, I think that we would benefit from simply ending the subsidized health insurance uh, and, and letting the private market take charge. Um, this is where I defer with the Republican Party. I think the Republican Party has basically exposed itself as a fraud. Uh, just like the Democrats, you know, they want to go half measures, both of them. You have to commit either way. Uh, either you believe that, um, you know, the private market can provide the proper, um, the proper channels for people to get their health insurance and health coverage. And there should be a few safety nets, at least for our generation. You know, I can't say for in 2025 20, years when we actually see the results of Medicaid and Medicare. But in, in our generation, I do believe we're going to have to have, um, you know, a safety net for the low, lowest income sectors of the population. There's no way to get around that. However, um, when you do this, corporate welfare, as Obamacare has done for, um, <laughs> you know, since 2014, uh, basically handing uh, subsidies to corporations that are providing health insurance. And, th and then they still can't make the plans profitable, and they end up dropping them. I say it's it's time for us to abandon this flawed model. Uh, are these governors trying to make it so that this will be a permanent system? Well, you'll see in the article that they don't really do that. But what they're trying to do is to make political hay of the fact that they're doing a quote unquote bipartisan, um, you know, and I'm using whole hands for the air quotes, please, just to give you an idea of how ridiculous it is. Th their whole point is that this is a bipartisan plan. They, they don't talk about the feasibility of the plan or really wh why they as state governors would want to. Um, you know, bail out Obamacare. So let's look at the article and glean whatever we can from what's going on with these, uh, I think there are eight state governors. Okay, this is from the Las Vegas Sun, Thursday, August 31st, so that's last Thursday. Um, and it, it talks about Governor uh, Brian Sandoval, the governor of, of uh, Las Vegas who, to be honest with you, I don't know much about him. I don't know if he's a good governor or not. Uh, apparently, he destroyed his competition in 20, uh, 2016, I believe he was reelected. He was reelected with, with something like over 75% uh, of, the, of the vote. So these are, these are states where, um, for the most part, these governors are really entrenched. They don't have, or, or even... If you, if, to be honest with you, they are term limited, so they're not going to be up for re-election anyway. Now, Sandoval could be a rock star in the future, 
because he is the one of the, the only two Hispanic governors in the country. I think the other one is uh, Martinez of New, New Mexico. I'm not sure if she's still governing, but uh, she was governor last time I checked. And he was elected with um, over 70 percent of the vote in 2014, reelected rather. So we're talking about a very popular governor. Uh, so let's read through this. A bipartisan governor duo is urging Congress to retain the federal health care laws unpopular individual mandate while seeking to stabilize individual insurance markets as legislators continue to work on a long-term replacement law. The recommendation is part of a compromise plan that's designed to be palatable to both parties. It was endorsed by six other governors. So you can see in the in the sub subtitle up here it says the letter was signed by the governors of Alaska, Louisiana, Montana, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. What are we talking about again? We're talking about basically uh, a compromise bill uh, by a group of eight governors to bail out Obamacare on the state level. Um, I'm not sure what that will entail. I, I imagine in the future it will actually include a demand for the federal government and Donald Trump to, uh, you know, continue cost share reductions, which they actually get to in the article. Ohio Governor John Kasich, a Republican, and Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper, a Democrat, shared their plan in a letter to congressional leaders Thursday. They acknowledge retaining the mandate may be a difficult sell for Congress, which has failed so far to pass a replacement health care bill. The current mandate is unpopular, but for the time being, it is perhaps the most important incentive for healthy people to enroll in coverage. They wrote to House and Senate leaders of both parties. Experts concur that keeping younger, healthier people in the insurance pool protects against costs ballooning out of control. The letter was signed by governors of Alaska, Louisiana, Montana, Nevada, Pennsylvania, and Virginia. Kasich, and, and there, uh, that's important. I'm going to get to why those are the very, those particular states. It's pretty important why they are the ones that are in question. Kasich and Hickenlooper also recommend that President Donald Trump commit to cost share sharing reduction payments to ensure that Congress funds those offsets at least through 2019. Those payments reimburse insurers for providing low-income people with legally required reductions on co-pays and deductibles. If Trump follows through on threats to pull the plug, premiums would jump about 20%. The governors note that the National Governors Association U.S. Chamber of Commerce and National Association of Insurance Commissioners all have identified the payments as an urgent necessity. <coughs> Governor Brian Sandoval said in a statement that he's committed to protecting coverage for residents benefiting from the Medicaid expansion and Silver State Health Insurance Exchange. So now they go more into the local uh, Nevada issues and everything. So what's my take on this? Let me go through these governors, okay? You have the governor of Ohio, term-limited Republican John Kasich. You have the governor of Colorado, term-limited Democrat John Hickenlooper. The governor of uh, Nevada, Sandoval, also term limited. You have the governor of Montana. I think his name, uh, let me see what his name is. His name is uh, Steve Bullock, and he was reelected in 2016 for a, for a second term. So he's term limited too. Um, you know, a successful governor. Uh, you have the governor of Louisiana, John Bell Edwards, who's a new Democratic governor. Uh, he's not going to face re-election, I think, until, I want to say, 2019 or 2020. Uh, so he, he has a little ways to go before facing re-election. You have the governor of Virginia, Terry McAuliffe, a Democrat. You have the governor of Alaska, who's an independent. Let's see who he is. So the governor of Alaska is Bill Walker, and he, he basically supports it for the same reason that a lot of other um centrist Republican support Obamacare provisions, which is that they want the Medicaid expansion. Uh, the Medicaid expansion, by the way, why, why, do, why do moderate Republicans like it, at least at the governor's level? Because 
they get free money from the federal government and, and they can still say that they balance their budget because I mean, they, they get a massive amount of cash. They, they do manage their Medicaid program, but in a small state like Alaska, it's very easy for them to uh, balance their Medicaid costs as opposed to some states, you know, they're, they're basically basket cases. I think, uh, the worst case is, is um, you know, California. I think they have a massive Medicaid fraud over there. Um, who did we miss so far? The only governor that is not up for re-election or, or that, that can be re-elected is Tom Wolf of Pennsylvania. Okay, so Tom Wolf of Pennsylvania will be up for re-election in 2018. I think it's a pretty gutsy step for him, uh, being in a state that really swung for Donald Trump in 2016. Yeah, I think I think if you really want to talk about who would be the hero of this bill if it, if it were to pass, it would be that Tom Wolf guy. But but it's probably as more of as a result of his defending the Medicaid expansion than it would be for um, sticking up for Obamacare. Ultimately, I want to explain why I think that this bill, or and it's not even a bill, it's more of a, a resolution by a number of governors. Uh, I don't know what they can do. They, they could make some sort of uh, agreement to share costs between each other, uh, do the cost share reductions between their, their state governments or something. I, I think that would be, you know, a very interesting idea for a number of reasons. But um, let's focus here on whether it's a smart idea. We're talking about state governments, many of them very hamstrung by, you know, their own public sector unions and their pension debt and all that. And they're, they're promising to bail out a program that's, that's you know, it's pushed the federal government into massive debt, too. Um, and it's a very unpopular mandate. And they want to keep the Obamacare part. Look, the Medicaid expansion part... Um, is the most popular part of Obamacare. Is it something I agree with? No. But it's at least something consistent with the attitudes of state-managed health care. Um, you, you are expanding the program that's already existing. Um, you're, you're fully covering the costs of all the patients, and the private, private insurance doesn't touch it at all. Now, what's the problem with Obamacare itself? One of the things that I always talk about when... I'm doing the ACA today uh, is that you're basically taking um, a private market and you're trying to price fix it. Okay, it doesn't matter who's doing it, the federal government or the state government. Remember that. And price fixing is doomed to failure. Uh, I think you could look at most industries. It's a horrible idea, except for ones that are, uh, you know, strategic resources um, healthcare would not count as that. That's more of a service. Okay, uh, it's just it's a very important service, but ultimately price fixing does not work there, um, and especially of the type you're talking about. What this entails then is you're trying to subsidize this uh, program. You're trying to cover all these costs for healthcare. So these companies are are billing their patients these premiums, and the government's saying, well. We're going to subsidize, you know, let's say 60% of it, depending on what income it is. You know, some people will get 60% subsidy. Some people will get 40%. Some, some people might get 80%. But what incentive does this give for these insurance companies to lower premiums? It doesn't. Um, <clears throat> and more than that, go down the pipeline, go to the actual healthcare provider. The real problem is that hospitals, now they're getting this Medicaid expansion. Now, now okay. Medicaid expansion, you did that. What effect does that have? Well, hospitals are not able to bill um, the provider, which would be the federal government, the same amount of money for Medicaid that they can for regular patients. They usually have to take like a, like a, a real loss on it. So how do they make up that, um, that cost? Well, they turn to uh, the, the, pay, the paying customers, the paying patients. The people that are paying for a private health insurance. That's why Democrats and, and progressives they say, "Oh, this this uh, private health insurance it can't possibly work. All they care about is money." Well, why do they care about money? Well, uh, the, these providers 
they're seeing their costs skyrocket because they have to provide very, very um, discounted care for the Medicaid patients. Uh, so therefore, the people that are actually charged to insurance, whether they're Obamacare or not Obamacare, they have to, <laughs> they basically have to screw them in order to cover their costs. Okay, so this, this would seem to the progressive mind a justification for um, expanding <laughs> into single-payer government-managed health care. It's not. Uh, what you're doing is you're having state-managed health care sabotage the private sector. Um, and it doesn't matter what government branch does it what, or government uh, level does it, I should say. I'm drinking some nasty tap water, by the way. So um, it's interesting we're talking about health care. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to survive this week. <laughs> but um, look, look at it this way. Governor Kasich is doing the, the work of Barack Obama on the backs of Ohioans. <coughs> and, and any other governor that participates in this program, I guarantee that the, the program itself is going to crash and fail. But why is it important that you have governors that are term limited and won't be running for re-election doing it? Because in, in many cases, they're not going to have to suffer from the consequences of what they did. People may forget, um, given their... Uh, you know, the the fickle mind of the voter, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and, and that's where, you know, unfortunately, Jonathan Gruber, the architect of Obamacare, who called the voters stupid, that, that's where you can't argue with him because people have already forgotten how Obamacare has been such a disaster. There's, there's people rallying who don't give up. They've never had to actually use Obamacare, but they're defending Obamacare as if they're, they're being these selfless people. If they really were selfless, they would they would look at the program and all the damage it's done, all the waste, all the advertisement that's gone into propping up a program that's just been a complete disaster. And and um, it's it's a bad program for progressives. It's a bad program for conservatives. It's a bad program for the consumer. The only people that it serves are are um, insurance companies and their shareholders, um, and <coughs> and you know and and their lobbyists. And the the government uh, officials that support them, and that's that's an honest assessment. I think it's an assessment that's fair to, to Republicans, fair to Democrats, fair to independents. Uh, you have to look at these governors and really ask. Uh, now that you're out of you're going out of office, how can you go and support a program that's that's really been one of the most horrible acts of of uh, deliberate sabotage? on the American economy since, since the beginning of, of, of this uh, country. Uh, you can't justify it. It's, it's really inexcusable. Uh, I don't care what party you're on. I don't care what badge you wear. I don't care what state you're from. And for Governor Kasich to do this, I think it, it really solidifies the fact that I, I, don't, I don't support the Republican Party anymore. Th these people uh, and and, I, and to the extent that I ever did, I, I don't know why I did ever. It, it's it's really a joke party. Uh, what do you stand for? We we should stand for uh, expanding individual liberties and the con consumer rights, and giving people the back the freedoms that were guaranteed under the Constitution. And and that's it. We we cannot be uh, people as conservatives that talk about managing people's lives and. Um, you know, basically expanding the state's reach into people's, uh, into the economy and into their people's pockets and everything. And that's what it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up being. Uh, uh, look, I mean, look real close. When you do these cost sharing reductions, the money has to come from somewhere. Cost sharing reductions is a nice way the federal government likes to call uh, bailouts. It's exactly in the article itself. I didn't, I didn't keep reading because it, you know, we're not going to read the whole article, but I will post the link so you can check. Cost share reductions are bailouts, and that's what Donald Trump calls them. And that, that's what it is. And, I, you know, if Donald Trump is on the right side of this, I think I should support Donald Trump. There's other p points in this healthcare debate where he's been wrong, and I've, uh, I've opposed him. Okay, I, I've supported mostly the Rand Paul side and, and the Freedom Caucus. Th those are the people whose side I side with. The progressives have their own, uh, you know, I think even if, if you're somebody who believes in universal health care, you have a better case for why it would work than either um, Orion care, Trump care, Obamacare, whatever you want to call it. 
Uh, it has to be either one or the other. You can't do this hybrid garbage that they're trying to do. And, and the people that I'm going to argue with uh, and that I have been arguing with say that, that there should be a bipartisan plan and whatever. I don't care if every single I don't care if this has 95 percent approval and, and it's popular and, 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 and um, you know, you have parade floats for it. I'm still going to oppose a plan that I think is complete bullshit. And that's what the Kasich Hickenlooper plan is. It's it's a and and they even say it um, in the Denver Post. Here I'll show you the article. The Denver Post reports that that case the Hickenlooper Kasich plan is a band aid, not a heart transplant. Well, according to an independent analysis, it says here that the main point Hickenlooper, a Democrat, and Kasich, a Republican, want to make with their plan is it's a by is its bipartisan nature. Well, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. If, if a plan is awful and it has the support of both parties, I think people should run away from it. Um, the focus on the individual market is intentional. It's the most immediate need as insurers craft their 2018 benefit plans in September. But the individual market is a small part of the system, account, accounting for about 7% of the insured population, according to, the, to a Kaiser Family Foundation analysis in 2015. Um, it says the nonpartisan Colorado Health Institute called the plan a positive and practical step, but acknowledged it's a Band-Aid, not a heart transplant. The proposal calls for Congress to keep the individual mandate for now, and this part generated immediate crit criticism. The Colorado chapter of Americans for Prosperity, the conservative organization backed by the billionaire Koch brothers, said the plan fails out of the starting gate by calling for the continuation of the individual mandate. Rather than exploring ways to allow the market to be more competitive, his plan calls for more government intervention, which we already know drives up costs, said Jesse Mallory, the state director. This is the wrong solution. I, I happen to agree with this guy. Uh, the reaction from Congress so far is tepid. Republican U.S. Senator Cory Gardner of Colorado, who supported the repeal bills, said he wants to see more specific policy details before making an assessment. Regardless of their party or position, I stand ready and willing to work with anyone who is serious about reforming our broken health care system. U.S. Representative Diana DeJet of Denver said she viewed the proposal as a positive step, but she said she is concerned about not extending the cost-sharing payments to insurers beyond 2019 and allowing the changes to the federal health care law's essential benefits requirement. Colorado Health Institute analysts suggested Democrats will applaud how the proposal keeps parts of the Affordable Care Act intact, while the Republicans will embrace how it allows tax breaks for insurers and state flexibility to design new plans. Um, the Institute's Deborah Gokin concluded, while it is surely bipartisan, it has a dem definite Democratic tilt. Kasich disputed the idea in the CNN interview. This should satisfy just about everybody, he said, adding, I think this goes right down the middle. So, bottom line, they can't pass that plan without Congress's help. Uh, I think otherwise they would have to go to their own states. And, and if they w voluntarily decided to do this without federal help, uh, I think it would bankrupt some of their governments. It depends which ones. I think, I think the worst of them would probably be Louisiana. Uh, they, they, they could not manage to subsidize, uh, <laughs> you know, they don't have enough money to throw at health insurance companies. And notice the, the parts of the plan that they said would be um, amenable to Republicans uh, are more towards giving tax breaks to the insurance companies and, and allowing them flexibility to, uh, you know, the, the idea is not to give more money and, and, and tax breaks to insurance companies. The idea is to, is to fucking lower premiums. There's nothing. This is ridiculous garbage. And um, that's why I'm going to say that I oppose the plan as an Ohio resident. But, you know, if, if these Democratic and Republican governors want to, uh, you know, shoulder the burden of fucking health care up forever, which it would be. I think this uh, uh, Brian Sandoval, I think at a certain point he's going to bow out and he's going to say, you know, I think I think this plan is, is a little too retarded even for me. I think he's going to say, uh, you, you know, uh, I gave it a shot, but, you know, I think Nevada will stay out of this. And that's what's going to happen. Um, people are going to get um, that they're going to get sticker shock from it. 
Um, I already saw reactions in Ohio to the plan. People hate it. At least the people that are, are GOP voters here. Uh, GOP voters in Ohio, by the way, are, are more conservative than people think. Uh, John Kasich is uh, basically a governor by default because the Democratic Party is so inept and incompetent here that uh, he could probably, uh, you know, the, the the last guy who ran against him was basically the equivalent of a, of of a plate of Texas toast. That's that's how competent he was. His name was Ed Fitzgerald. But that's enough for today. Um, comment on the video. Let me know what you think. Uh, please tune in later tonight. I think around uh, 10, 10.30. I'm going to be having a, a chat with, with uh, Alex, a person who's got a totally different perspective on this. And, uh, you know, keep an eye out. Uh, this was the ACA Today for Bold Like a Leopard. This is Ramon. And uh, have a nice rest of your Sunday and happy Labor Day.